Hello, my name is Rajni Eddins, uh, and we're here today with the recipient of the Vermont uh, Outstanding Filmmaker o Award, the first of its kind, Outstanding Filmmaker Charles Burnett. Uh, so pleased to be here with you this morning. Thank you, it's a pleasure being here. Yes, uh, it was a blessing to hear you share uh, some of your experiences in terms of coming into the field. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I'm, I'm definitely thankful for the opportunity to hold space and unpack more of your journey at, because I think it, it lends the opportunity to inspire youth who are interested in filmmaking and people who are exploring the idea of how they can create their own narrative through this medium. So what got you into filmmaking proper? Um, it's strange because it wasn't something that was common in the neighborhood. You know, in fact, it was rare and the opportunity to either talk to someone, except for like music being me uh, and uh, like a musician or something like that, or uh, one or two few actors that manages, uh, managed to uh, benefit from being in the community. But basically, it was non-existence. It was more, I mean, people knew about being a lawyer, or a doctor or something like that. But filmmaking, I, I had to hide the fact that I was, I was interested in film from my <laughs> parents and the people in the neighborhood because they said, are you crazy? You know, what position can, you know, it doesn't exist, you know, unless you're a tap dancer, uh, making jokes or something like that. But being someone who was a technician or a director, because um, even though they had a history of black filmmakers, and there's, a, there's an exhibit that's going on now at the um, 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 uh, Academy of Motion Pictures uh, and the new museum that they're, they're they have in, in, in Los Angeles, uh, where you find that People of color has been have, have been in filmmaking since since 1897. Wow! You know, and it was a shock to me because the only person I knew about was starting to film a black filmmaker or group was the uh, was Oscar Micheaux. Right. In 1915 or something like that, he started uh, with the Homesteader and so forth. But we we never. I mean, all that other part of history was was missing, like Oscar Micheaux and Spencer Williams and all those people. You know, uh, it's not taught in school. Right. It wasn't until I got to UCLA and way into filmmaking that I learned about Oscar Micheaux. You know, and if, I, if that would have been uh, in my conscience earlier, it made me probably be a different filmmaker. Mm. Because if you looked at his films, his films were really r relevant to the black experience, more so than any other filmmaker since, you know, in many ways. And, and so that was sort of kept away from us, you know, in many ways. We didn't know anything about, you know, Frederick Douglass and the history of black, you know, Ida B. Wells and on and on and on. Uh, those things when we taught in school, it wasn't until, until Black History Month or something like that where mm. all of a sudden we became aware and, and universities started picking up that there was this history that we needed to talk about. It was forced upon them by, you know, progressive black people who said, no, we need to have these things in our, in our schools, and particularly in, in high schools and things like that where people can, can benefit from knowing that, you know, we were a part of making of this country, you know. Right. Uh, and so when we got to UCLA, the object was, because we were there at the Civil Rights Movement, when that period, that this is what we ought to be doing. We ought to be uh, exposing young kids in the community to our history, you know. Definitely, that's so valuable. And that, and that strikes a chord with me because I'm seeing these uh, elements in my daughter where her and her, her, pe her peer, a comrade, are aware of Ida B. Wells and they're putting these uh, names of these greats in their poetry. Mm. And that connection to their history is really having a self-actualizing process in terms of stimulating their consciousness as young black women. And it's just interesting to see how nourishing that element of positive self-affirmation, mm -hmm. learning about your role historically, even about certainly pushing forth a certain narrative can ha be the uh, determiner in terms of how you develop as a person and as an artist. Um, I had the uh, interesting uh, kismet-based uh, connection to meet the extended family of Melvin Van Peebles recently too, because we showed a, a film on his life called um, How to Eat Watermelon in the Company of White People and Still Enjoy It. <laughs> so I, I'm aware of his um, knowledge and experience too about the necessity for us to have more of an agency, autonomy-based sovereignty over our, over our own narratives. Um, were you um, up peers with Melvin, or did you have some relationship in that? Uh, yeah, it, it was, it, it, um, I remember when he first did this film, he did, um, when he was in France, he did, uh, oh, I can't think of the name of it, uh, uh, his first short film he did in France, then he went on to do uh, uh, Sweetback. Mm. 
And when I was at DC at the time, he brought the film there, you know, and um, it was a really um, a revolutionary kind of experience because before that, it was like films that made by Hollywood, you know, were selling my stories, and and Melvin, made, people made the main character a black person, a heroic character that uh, uh, accomplished what he wanted to do, and I and and, and uh, you know um, um, became this black hero, and. Uh, so that was a novelty to talk about, you know, black black heroes as as a main feature of a film. Mm. And before that was like you know, like Cabin in the Sky and all these other things, you know, uh, and, and 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 then a Raising the Sun, which they made into a, f a film with Sidney, Sidney Poitier. But but here was the one where here was a film where uh, the main character was a black person who who resisted the establishment, you know, and and white dominance and so forth, and it came out. Not a loser, but a winner. Right. You know? And so that was it created a, a lot of discussion when we were in film school. I mean, it was like, oh, keep on running feet. Yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> it was really wonderful to to have that kind of discussion for the first time in many. In the period. But there had been a few black films that made it in Hollywood who, who that did try to treat the subject matter more realistically to some extent, but it was very rare, you know. So when Meryl Mann Peebles came along with his uh, sweet. Like, Badass song. Uh, it was a totally different experience, and you know they had there were some wonderful films like like Nothing But a Man that Ivan Dixon did, mm. you know, which is today still uh, a powerful film, you know. Um, in fact, uh, Julius Harris, Julius Harris, Julius Harris, who played the main character in there with Ivan Dixon, and and Abby Lincoln was uh, Julius Harris was a person I wanted to make I wanted to work with on the film, so I, I wrote. When I did um, uh, Sleep with Anger, he was the person I thought of when I wanted the, the character, a hairy, a hairy man. Mm. And but it had been years and years since we made the film, and and we needed someone that had some clout because that's you know like uh, Danny Glover, who made it possible to make the film mm. because he had a name and Hollywood was interested in, in uh, you know exploiting people with names, you know, and exploited it in a good way, you know, and because they, utilizing their renown, their platform. Yeah. And so because with him attached to the film, it became possible for the studios to get interested and then put money behind it. Um, but it took that. And unfortunately, because of that way of looking at producing, needing a, a name, a lot of really talented actors didn't get the opportunity to sort of sort of uh, perform or, 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 or be the main character in a, in a film. When, when, when we were um, looking for a cast for to Sleep With Anger, we'd invited everybody in, all the black players who um, was working from day one, came in, and they were so great, uh, and 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 the reading, I mean, that they, they were like really powerful. And then you ask this really dumb question, like, why weren't you making? Why weren't you? Why why haven't we seen you before? Mm. And the answer was obvious. They don't get the opportunity. Mm. And these people were in their seventies and eighties and things like that. And you said, well, the world really missed. Um, all this talent. All this talent, and these people could have made a living off of it and, and produced more films and so forth, but it was l limited. And you see the, the, uh, the effect of segregation, the, the effect of racism and all that sort of thing, how it you know, destroys uh, lives and things like that, and, and, and the benefit that these people could have given not only the young people growing up, but you know, America as a whole, they, they could have seen that you know, there were stories about, we mentioned uh, Frederick Douglass, Adderby Wells, and you name it, you know, that it, you could have learned from that. It would have benefited me when I was going to school to know about these people. All these unknown personages. That reminds me of um, an interview I saw with Paul Robeson, and I think it was an Australian cohort of press, mm. and he was saying, um, he was speaking on how the second class citizenship treatment of black people is causing America to be robbed of so much mm. brilliance, so much natural and inherent genius. Mm -hmm. um, and I agree with that. I think we need the opportunity to have ourselves reflected to, in our own consciousness in positive ways, to know that there's a history and a trajectory for our inherent genius throughout the history of human family and civilization. Um, and, I, and I see that in you, I see that in Melvin. Um, folks who are bringing the community to the larger screen to enable us to see ourselves through our own eyes. Mm -hmm. Was that something that was 
always important to you from the onset when you began your journey as a filmmaker? Well, yes. Um, you know, I came, up to, I came up in film and to doing the civil rights movement. You know, the, the conflict between Martin Luther King, well, not a conflict, but you know, the difference between Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, you know, we had those choices, you know. And, 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 and so um, it, was, it wasn't until then that I began to really take education very seriously because before that, we didn't exist. Mm. You know, it was, it was this notion that we couldn't do anything, we couldn't achieve anything. One, because there wasn't examples other than George Washington Carver and people like that, you know, about the peanut, that's as far as we got. You mm, know? Mm. And there were more things than that, you know. Um, uh, not only um, uh, uh, Frederick Douglass, but all these people that were in, in, in forgotten heroes, you know, that contributed largely to our, our, our independence by struggling for, you know, uh, uh, trying to get in, uh, independence and, and awareness of the fact that we, we came from a, a country, Africa, where we had civilizations. A continent, the whole continent, yeah. yes. And, and, and I remember and, and when I was going to, <laughs> to elementary school, or no, junior high, whatever it was, and the teacher said, you know, uh, Egyptians can't draw. You know? <laughs> what? And, yeah, they, they just discarded anything the Egyptians did, you know. Uh, oh my uh, goodness. And so I took that as truth, you know, didn't know anything about, you know. And then when I went to Egypt, it was astounding. When you see the pyramids, you see it in Luxor. They spilled know. all that. Oh, it was, wrong I was shocked. I was like, <laughs> information. What? And the, the iconography, all this stuff that, that existed uh, in Egypt, you know, some of the, if you look at the architecture buildings, and you set, you could go to Karnak, you know, Luxor, and you look at the, 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 the sculpture, the monuments, and you said, in fact, that was a little. Producer, when we went down to Karnak, you know, and he was stunned. He said, "People couldn't do this. It, it took space people who, who, who did this. Mm. You know, he couldn't accept the fact that <laughs> aliens had to do this. Yeah, aliens, aliens had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it was obvious that, you know, the, the it, to this day they just began to uh, speculate on how they built the pyramids. You know, mm -hmm. and they was like, no, humans can't do that. And these are Africans, you know, mm. did that. You know, and you go down to, to." Um, the, uh, 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 the uh, 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 Nubian culture and stuff like that, and how they had their pyramids and on and on, and it, and how they discovered that there was this other planet out there, and uh, 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 and uh, you know where uh, they they kind of understand how they saw that there was another Sirius planet. Sirius B, because they were aware of the Dogon tribe had knowledge yeah. of these planets even before Europeans had the technology. Yeah, to even before they had understand them. Uh, you know. Uh, kind of what do you call uh, it? Uh, the telescopes, heavens. yeah. And in this day, it's a mystery to why this sort of thing existed. And they didn't want to say that, well, there was culture, there was a culture, there was a history there, there was people with this technology that we can't explain today. You and know? That's foundational to all human yeah. family, yes. And I know if I would have known that when I was going to, to elementary school or uh, high school, whatever it is, I'd have been a different person. Mm. You know, I would have been motivated to, 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 to do something, you know. Uh, 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 you know, or take part in it more, more, more readily because I know that there's, but there's a history there, and there's a continuity, uh, and, and that I have, I should observe, you know, and I'd have been motivated instead of coming up with being brainwashed and saying we can't do anything, right? You know, and, and I look at young people and you say, look, you know, you have a history here, you know, um, and. And you need to be aware of it because that'll make you a different person. I mean, I mean, you can look back and see where where do where the drugs come from? Where all this stuff? And having a person with self-esteem, mm -hmm. living in a community where you say I can do anything, you know, and uh, become anything, because you're telling me uh, whatever I do didn't mean anything, have any meaning. And then still, there's people who who f fought for to expose, you know, the fact that. As people coming together, they can do remarkable things. And I mean, when we look at, if you study history, look at Reconstruction, the period of Reconstruction, you know, what we accomplished as groups working together when they had unions that were integrated. Even yeah. that short span of time where we had opportunity to ascend to positions of power, to advocate not just for ourselves as black people, but to advocate for poor whites and advocate for shifts yeah. in politics that would allow for greater freedom and equity. Yeah, uh, those are the really positive things, but of course when Andrew Johnson was, became president after being become vice president under Abraham Lincoln, destroyed every, you know, just that whole concept mm -hmm. of, of forming a, a union, you know, among different groups. And you had, 
you know, um, uh, Woodrow Wilson, who uh, is, was probably one of the questionable worst presidents we had, mm. you know, fired when he got to be president, and and what in, in 1915, whatever the, the year was, when he became president, he fired all the black postmen in in Washington D.C. Wow. You know, and after he had promised, you know people of color that he was going to be this exceptional person and, and then he turned his back on everyone. So, but we have to understand where we come from and where we can go, you know, and, and that was a, that was the point of being a filmmaker in, 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 in the 60s and 70s that we were obligated and should have been uh, trying to address these problems and bring filmmaking to the community and that, that's what our purpose was, you know, to have film as a means of social change, you know. Beautiful. Because, yeah, because that was a, that was a part of our makeup coming up in the '60s. You know, being part of the civil rights movement and so forth was the fact that we had this notion that that we were going to change things. That it, it was our responsibility. People who had a bit of an education to sort of like reflect on the past and try to make a difference. You know, because it seems to me as an artist, and particularly in, with the power of, of imagery, you have a vital role, responsibility, and um, potential to influence the minds of our people and people at, at large on a grand scale to really inject us into the collective imaginary in a way that maybe historically we hadn't been seen or had the opportunity to be seen through our own eyes in. What would you um, encourage um, budding and burgeoning filmmakers, youth filmmakers, filmmakers of global majority of African descent um, to do now with that role and responsibility of being able to hold a lens to the world and create narratives. Well, there's so many great stories that we've talked about and written about and experienced that we need to expose younger kids, uh, people, to our history because that would make a very difference. Just understanding that that you know, I have I have created uh, I've come from a civilization that had mathematics and and all sorts of things that this you know uh, coming to America. Didn't put, we had that long before this country existed, you know, right. things like that. And that would help people get self-esteem, you know, which you really need. Instead of having, you know, like, like I mentioned earlier that when I went to high school, it was nothing mentioned about our accomplishments, mm -hmm. of who we are as people, you know. And, and so a young person who uh, doesn't allow this, this notion that we, we, we come from nothing, brainwash them. You know, and they f they feel confident they can do anything. You know, and achieve. And it, it, it's not only it 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 affects them, it affects it, it uh, uh, reflects this whole country how they missed out on geniuses and people who, given the opportunity, would have accomplished so much right. that would benefit humanity as a whole. Never got the opportunity uh, the opportunity, and and because of that, everyone suffered. Because if you if you if you limit you know, people's capacity to do things, accomplish things. We could have medicines and science and all this other thing. We could have been a part of creating, you know. Right. And instead, it's it's like uh, they keep you down. It kept the whole country down. Right. I feel like know? that's a painful reality of racism, where white children are robbed as much as black children of their own humanity, because when they're taught to underestimate the potential of black people, they lose a sense of themselves and the acknowledgement and recognition that we all have greater potential and it robs us the opportunity to be able to unify in meaningful, impactful ways, um, to be able to co-create a society. Sorry. Oh, no worries. Uh, and, uh, and a community of healthy and positive relationship that has mutual respect as its, um, as its core and cornerstone. Of course, black children, when they are t mistaught that we have no history, like John Henry Clark was told mm -hmm. by his uh, neighbor, you have no history, which is, interesting because <laughs> history starts with black people. Um, but that has the role of inferiorizing mm -hmm. black people and people of global majority. But it has the role of also falsely superiorizing white children and then robbing them of the understanding that we have a capacity to co-create brilliance together. Um, what are some of the things you would encourage um, filmmakers, creatives to, to speak to in terms of helping to transform that consciousness? Well, it's a good it's a good question because what we're going through now in this country is this criticism of critical race theory, this whole thing of uh, of of erasing the past, you know, and not talk about slavery. And if you can't, I mean, I was in I was in 
Japan and Tokyo, and um, making this film with Daiso Kim Gibson about Korean comfort women, and how in Japan, we were talking about these professors, uh, uh, university teachers, who are in, in denial about how the war started, uh, you know, and a lot of students there don't understand that uh, that that Japanese attacked uh, Pearl Harbor and the war started, uh, declared war, uh, and they thought that student this thought that they couldn't understand why America attacked and dropped the atomic bomb, mm. you know, and and so they're getting a, 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 a the false idea of, of responsibility and their role in the whole um, uh, Indochina conflict, you know, and, mm. the, and, and, and the, the fact that they c committed so many crimes, uh, just like the Germans in many ways, and so that was totally erased from their understanding of what happened. Mm -hmm. And we're becoming, you know, hiding history and, and, and the role. If you, there's, there's so many uh, books that y y y y we should be focusing on, you know, about, you know, uh, lynchings and things like that, you know, where Ida B. Wells was responsible to- The Red Record. Bring, yeah, and things, and there's this lady uh, now who wrote this book about, uh, about lynchings and so forth. It's a, it's a, hard, it's a hard book to take, you know, mm -hmm. in many ways. Because I remember when I was coming up and, and, and Emmett Till was killed. And I remember looking at Jet Magazine and that just, in, in, a, in a, an amazing way, destroyed, I, I mean, I grew up then. It was, I was no longer innocent at that point, you know. And I could see what people could do. And you know, it was all in Jet Magazine and, and showing the body and everything. And I marked that day as when I was no longer, uh, had these sort of like uh, notions about uh, this country and, and it's like, no, this is a real world. You know, I was born in Mississippi, mm -hmm. so I was aware of a lot of things. You know, even though I was aware, I was still affected by it because I remember going to New Orleans and being I'm from Vicksburg, Vicksburg, Mississippi, but going to New Orleans on this integrated training and stopping in New Orleans and uh, went into this playroom and was kicked out of there because I wasn't, you know, I was a, a, a black person. And, wow. uh, and it took me it was before Rosa Parks and things like that, and so uh, it took me uh, years to get over that experience, mm. you know. And it wasn't until just recently that I was able to go back to New Orleans without having this this stressful kind of a, a relationship with her. And, and it's traumatizing. Yeah, it, and it stays with you forever and for a long time. And it wasn't until just recently, a couple of years ago, I was able to go back and feel relatively comfortable without remembering the past, and so. Uh, people don't know how how, effect, how effective that is to be denied your know, existence and and your being and, and everything. Uh, yeah, it has a it has a debilitating role on on your sense of your own freedom and, and uh, freedom of movement. I know I saw that with um, a recent documentary on the life of Sidney Poitier, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. where when he came from the uh, the island of his mm -hmm. family, he wasn't familiar with uh, Jim Crow mistreatment of black people yeah. in Florida. And then when he, when he came to deliver a package and the white woman told him to go to the back, he didn't understand. So he just left the package on the front of the yeah. steps. And then when he came home later that evening, his family relayed to him, what did you do? The Klan was here. Because there's such a notion of the, the, the kind of terminal insecurity of white people that they were rapacious about safeguarding anything they could to bring that message of inferiority home to black people. Um, I think because I come from a mother who was a panther yeah. and who always spoke um, love and light and the importance of having confidence and recognition of our true role in not only America but in human society and human history, that we should hold our heads high, that we should know we come from great people, people who were civilizers, who were cultivators, who, who started um, all things that human beings do as the progenitors before there was even a European in existence. So I think those particular things are important for children to know, for black children in particular to know, um, for their own well-being and sound mental health and positive self-image, but also for all children to know, for honest appreciation of human history and knowing about who we are as a human family. Mm -hmm. um, do you think there are ways that film can arrive in that space uh, through documentary and, and through um, uh, popular cinema that can touch that? part of the mind and bring home that story? Oh yeah, like film is a powerful I image, 
you know, we think in terms of images, you know, and, and drama. Um, and to pro provide history through film and drama has a, has a very important impact on who we are because we, you know, gravitate toward images, you know. They explain the universe and everything to, for us. Um, you know, I came up when people were telling folk tales and things like that, and mm -hmm. that is all history. You know, and then they explain the world through images and things like that. Mm. And because uh, I used to, from, from Mississippi, uh -huh. um, we were great storytellers from, from Vicksburg. Mm. And I remember um, someone was saying that you can tell a person from, 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 from Vicksburg. He said, how, how do you do that? <laughs> because one leg is shorter than the other. Because Vicksburg had so many hills that people had to walk. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and the strange way that one leg grew up, the other so oh my but in following that they said well one of the things about people from Vicksburg was either great stories or all liars you know? <laughs> and, uh, I remember having I took that as an, an offense in a certain way you mm -hmm. know being mm -hmm. from Vicksburg but not really but I grew up in Los Angeles tall but, tales yeah but but I enjoyed them you know and and one of the things that I made uh, the sleep with anger was about the the the, the lack of of being aware of your history mm. and trying to, you know, escape from it. Because I remember when we were kids growing up, hardly anyone from all Los Angeles was born, were born in Los Angeles. You know, when you, fought, when you saw someone, knew someone was born in Los Angeles, it was like, where are you from, Mars, something like that? Because <laughs> we're either from the South, because everyone in my neighborhood was either from Arkansas, or Mississippi, uh, Louisiana, All something. transplants from the South. Yeah. yeah, and when you found someone who was from here, born here, it's like, oh, Really? You know, what are you doing here? You know, Actually, on this soil, huh? Yeah. And, and, and so that was a, 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 a novelty. Mm -hmm. But the, the, fact that, the fact that we were all sort of like forced into this short, this, this small area as a, a ghetto. And, um, you know, I've seen, it wasn't until I went to, to South Africa in Johannesburg and, and seen Soweto that I s knew what a ghetto was. Mm. I mean, like you think it like a few blocks, like in Harlem or Brooklyn, whatever it is, uh, in Los Angeles and, and things like that. But when you see a ghetto, that's the whole country is a ghetto. Wow. Like in, in Johannesburg, mm. uh, in, in Soweto, where you drive up and there's this, the horizon, there's nothing but this brown smoke over, over, overhead. And then you see, get closer, from, the, from one end of the horizon to the other, there's these little, the shanties that have, because of tin roofs, it reflected this uh, reflective thing, and it's and it just was surprising and shocking wow. to to see the whole country of black civil population housed in this you know uh, is in uh, uh, Soweto, uh, Alexandria, and you know and and um, in the other part of uh, 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 South Africa. Uh, it was it was just amazing, and that just changed everything. You, know, you said no, L L A was like a, a little one or two st uh, streets, about a couple of miles, you know, uh, square miles, whatever it is. But when you see Soweto, you that see one, more intense, like widespread fashion. Um, it just it, it it's incredible to. It's like when you drive I and mean, you take the train in from the south into uh, New York, and you are going through. Um, what New Jersey, and you look across the, the Hudson, whatever, and you see um, uh, the, the skyline of uh, Manhattan, and it's like Jesus Christ is like well, one into the other, it's like the whole world, <laughs> world right, right. is a part of uh, New York, and you're just su surprised by the the, 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 the hugeness the of it. Of it yeah. yeah, and and, and that's the way Soweto was. It was like wow, I, I never, I I wouldn't be called anything in, in the c country. A, a, a ghetto anymore. Yeah, you, you look more. You look across the world. You see all these intensive degrees of poverty. Oh, you know, and, and like our, our certainly our poverty here in the U.S. is not on par with poverty in other places in the world where people are more abject. Oh, yeah, but now it's. I mean, you see homeless people, you see kids in the streets, you see uh, families, and then like taking the whole city blocks, park, you know, street uh, bus stops, and having all the all the. Uh, Utilities and everything, furniture and clothing, out on the street. It's a. I mean, you didn't see that in Los Angeles at one point, and anywhere. Right. It's yeah. been increasing so dramatically, and the um, the that oh, in this. Yeah. Yeah, that intensifying um, 
in terms of the, the harmful uh, ways that people are being discarded um, as homeless people, as people of global majority, as black people, as women, the, the, la the la cavalier lack of compassion in the world that is so rampant. Do you believe that film and art has a role in transforming that dynamic? Oh, it, it, it does. I mean, I remember, um, I remember seeing, you know, um, films that were done by Ozu and Kurosawa and things like that uh, about the Japanese community and their existence. And, and a lot of documentaries that yours even did and, and about people. Um, and when you see films that, like, for example, when I first saw uh, a Japanese film made by a Japanese person, mm. it's just a whole different world. Mm. It's like these people exist and you see all this propaganda films that were made after this war about, you know, uh, the, the, the Japanese people. Stereotypes. Of yeah, Japanese. and just, or, or Native Americans. It wasn't until I was sitting next to an indigenous person in a theater that was showing the searchers that I, I, I was looking at the searchers like, like I guess people look at Birth of a Nation like, oh, it doesn't affect me. But I remember, you know, you, you, you're aware of the, the, the distortions of Birth of a Nation, but I was certainly unaware of, of John Wing's contribution to racism mm -hmm. in terms of the searchers and, and, and fighting the Native Americans and things like that. And uh, I was, I was, as I mentioned, I was sitting in the theater with this a, a young lady who was uh, from the First Nation, so to speak. And um, so we were sitting by, and when the searchers came on, it was a particular scene that she just jumped up and ran out of the theater. And, and so I followed her out and I said, what's going on? He said, well, didn't you see that? How they treated this uh, Native American lady that was uh, in the movie? I saw it, but I wasn't, uh, you know, uh, aware of the consequence of it, you know, its implication mm -hmm. until she told me, you know, shouting that this is the most racist film she, and then you read about John Wayne's and his uh, uh, comments about uh, black people and native and people of, of color, and I said, yeah, I can see it now, mm -hmm. you know, and so we need people to address those problems, a fact check and say, no, this is the problem it has real serious implications of who we are as people, as Americans, and how we treat other people, foreign people, you know. And uh, so we, we need voices to make us aware of, like, you're not supposed to be cheering for necessarily the, uh, 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 you know, like Tarzan or Custer and people like that, you know. We need to examine that, look at it realistically, and then talk about we built this, no, this country existed long before we got here, right. you know. And, and, and people were there too. Yeah, people were there, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and so there was a culture, there was, there was uh, uh, nations and stuff like that, and so, People need to be, and now they're trying to er, eviscerate that and, 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 and take that history even more so now mm. that you, you don't understand where we weren't angels here. When, you know, we were like people who destroyed a lot of the people uh, here in the culture and so forth. You know? And so we need to, in order to move forward, and, and, and we need to understand where we came from, everybody. Yeah, that, rec that reckoning has to come full circle. Yeah. I want to thank you for your time because I know we have to close mm -hmm. soon. Um, maybe I'll ask you one final question that I'll kind of offering to the folks who are perhaps having some uh, trepidation or, or self-doubt about getting into their own creativity around sharing their narrative as filmmakers. I'm, I'm reaching out to the, the youth now of all different backgrounds who may have an interest or an inkling um, in terms of wanting to explore their mm -hmm. creativity and, and, and expand c their courageous narrative, what would you say to them who are kind of on the fence but had some interest in expanding that possibility for themselves? <coughs> Excuse me, I would say to be objective. Read as much as you can about your history and identify with these folks, you know, that came before you and you have to honor them because, you know, I'm, you know, I, am, I have claustrophobic, I'm claustrophobic. And I look at these pictures of these people on slave ships, how they were packed together. Now, I couldn't survive that, you know, because I was, you know, you know, I would have been the one who had jumped over in the middle passage in the water, you know, right, said, hey, right. forget about this. <laughs> so I owe a debt to these people, because mm. it wasn't for them suffering from that and enduring it, I wouldn't be here today. Because mm -hmm. I, I know what claustrophobia phobia is, mm. you know, so, I, so whenever, and there's a lot of great stories that we have to explore and talk about that we need to share with the rest of the world and the, particularly the people in, the, in this country. You know, human beings that, that sacrifice, make great sacrifices, you know, and endure it a lot, you know. Um, 
because I, 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 I couldn't have suffered through that. It would have been a different whole story if I was like, yeah, I said, you know, it wouldn't have been like, and I, I'm sorry, but you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not a violent person. I don't believe in capital punishment, but I wouldn't turn my cheek. Right. You know, I, you know, I, I just, you know, I don't owe you that. Right. You know, and I have kids and, and I have to protect them, you know, and so I would, my being, uh, you know. Uh, Assertive. And yeah, I, I, I'm not a violent person, but one who say, you, you have no right to take away from me, you know, my kids or their future. Yeah, I will not allow myself to be dehumanized by you nor my family. Yeah, and be in lynching and stuff like that. No, that would have ended right there. Right. You know? So, I mean, I would say read as much as you can, be aware of your history, and be in, 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 in sympathetic with uh, who those people were who gave you life, you know, mm. and, and fought the hard fight and the, the battle and made it possible for you to be here today. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much for this. Oh powerful interf interview, Charles. Oh, my I pleasure. appreciate your contribution to cinema and encourage all the folks who are watching out there to take it upon themselves to explore this man's voluminous work and to be inspired and encouraged in creating your own narrative because art and, and film, as he has said, has such a powerful role in shifting consciousness. So thank you for your time today. Thank you for having me. Thank you, sir.